talk about uh, Harry and Meghan, who uh, don't seem to be able to stay out of the news for longer than than 30 seconds. Um, this is the American singer Don McLean. Now, he has now given an interview to The Mail, basically saying that he doesn't he, he, he doesn't really think that Harry should keep banging on about his family. Uh, in fact, at the time he took to Twitter to say Prince Harry should shut his mouth about uh, uh, various issues, and now criticising him even more. What can you tell us about that? Well, one of the things that uh, Don McLean, uh, uh, an artist I'm particularly fond of, because I, the first ever album I bought was his American Pie. And he has, though, let's be quite clear, before I get to the meat, he's had his controversies in his time, um, and particularly with the break surrounding the breakup of his second marriage and uh, one or two uh, allegations that he had to deal with. But what he's had a go at, and it sort of resurfaced, is he criticised Harry for his criticism of Graceland and Elvis's house, which, basically, paraphrasing, Harry didn't think was up to much. And Don McLean has gone round and said, well, um, look, this was a man who came from nothing. You shouldn't be criticising him. He is the king of rock and roll, whereas you, of course, live in a sort of gilded palace and have no right to criticise one of the greatest musicians of the 20th century. So I think that's where it's come from. And Don McLean, obviously famous for American Pie and one or two other songs as well along the way, um, but uh, it, he's entered the fray. But as I say, Don McLean, great musician, but he does have has attracted controversy but he's another one who's had a pop at Harry who is saying that now he's come to America, he should have no right to be criticising American institutions. He should just accept that he's come there and just get on with his life. Well, th this is the actual quote. You're quite right. Um, he, he says to the Daily Mail, he doesn't understand, and this is such a, 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 an insult, he doesn't understand that Elvis is like the poor man's king. He came from nowhere. His recordings are among the greatest ever made. His family was, were as poor as they could be. And Harry criticised Elvis's home as if he's comparing it to Buckingham Palace, and that misses the point completely. Here's a fellow who has been brought up to be mannerly, but you don't criticise America when you're living here as our guest. Um, I think that it's pretty damning um, from Don McLean, um, who's re released a new album, so I'm sure it'll put some eyeballs up uh, and people wanting to buy his new album, maybe I'll be, I'll be buying that. I mean, do, 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 do you think that Harry and Meghan will ever stop moaning? Will ever stop complaining about various things? There, I'll, I'll just, I swear they're going to complain soon that the sky is the wrong colour blue. Um, well, they're now trying to paint that everything is going well. They're sort of putting a positive spin on their Nigerian trip and that they're, they're, they're looking forward. They're trying now. And I'm sure their PR people are telling them, right, you've done your royal bashing, time to move on and, and put sort of a line under that. And it's all about looking forward now. And that's what they're trying to do, is to be seen to be now a positive influence. That's what they'll be spinning from their Nigerian trip. Um, I have no idea whether it went down brilliantly in Nigeria. I'm sure there were some controversial aspects, but... The optics, well, uh, especially the, the cost. Meghan, I would imagine the, point of view, they'll be saying it looked good from our perspective, and they'll say they'll be doing more of those in the future. Um, even though, uh, so for, as far as I can see, there will be that will just mean more word salad coming out of their mouths. So um, yes, but maybe um, so lovely, all, all so lovely all, to see Megan, such an advocate for women's rights, going to a country where, of course, there is uh, horrific human rights abuses, which they choose not to mention when they're being treated like rock stars. And I thought now that they're not royals, they can speak out about these sorts of things. But funnily enough, when they've got people being sycophantic around them, quite tight-lipped. Isn't that strange? Uh, that that is exactly uh, the point. They basically want to stage manage everything. They don't want they want to have control of the narrative at, at all times and to be painting this sort of perfect picture uh, of their sort of philanthropy in and good work that they're doing in 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 this case in Nigeria. So it's a it, they've got a fine line to sort of make it work on a big scale. But, but even that Nigeria trip, you felt it was supposed to be about the Invictus Games. But the real narrative of all of it was that Meghan was seen to be at centre stage. And that was the problem. When she was part of the royal family, they were part of the royal family, she didn't like being the number two, because obviously 
when they were on a royal visit, it was Harry and she was there as the other half. Well, now she wants to be the number one and Harry just to sort of, in some cases, just tag along. You get the feeling that's sometimes how it sort of portrays, even though this trip had Invictus Games at the heart of it as the plan that they would be going uh, to try and stage the Invictus Games uh, four, or five, four or six years down the line. Oh, well, poor old Hopalong Harry. Maybe he'll get his time in the spotlight uh, soon. Maybe at the launch of American Riviera when they try and sell us tea towels and teapots. Uh, listen, good to talk to you, Rupert, uh, as always. That